How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck and other gaming handhelds. Today though, it is all about the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck OLED, it's been out for a few months. The regular Steam Deck's been out for a couple of years and I have probably, I don't know, like two or 3,000 hours combined on both of these devices. So I racked my memory. I tried to think of all the different things I do on my Steam Deck and I came up with a list of 16 different tips and tricks that are actually useful and and most of them you probably haven't heard about if you're a new Steam Deck user. And if you're a longtime Steam Deck user like I am, you might have heard of a few of these or even most of them, but I promise you there will be one on this list that you haven't heard of. Before we jump into it all, I would love to get a silver play button on this channel, so help me out by subscribing and setting your notifications to all. I checked the data, like 90% of the people who watch this channel aren't subscribed, so if you've enjoyed it before or you're enjoying it now, help me out by subscribing to the channel. All right, so the first thing you're going want to do on your Steam Deck or OLED. I'm going to say Steam Deck OLED because that's what I have and it's like in my head. So just deal with me on that. Okay. Even if you have an LCD, I'm going to call it an OLED. All right. The first thing you're going to want to do is fix your Steam Deck's Wi-Fi speeds. I'm sure you've noticed if you have a five gigahertz setup at your house, but even if you don't, you've probably noticed that your Steam Deck downloads a lot slower than other devices on your network, gaming PCs and PS5s included. There's a really easy fix for this and I don't understand why Valve doesn't default to this being turned on, but all you have to do is turn on developer mode, which can be found in the settings. And once you do that, there will be a developer menu option on the actual settings. I think it's at the very bottom of the list. And once you go in there, there should be a toggle for Wi-Fi power management. It even says that it improves speeds on five gigahertz networks. It totally fixed mine from being very slow to being incredibly fast. Like I can download games overnight and my screen won't be on for more than, I don't know, an hour or two at the most. So I'm just going to say it. This is one of the most important things you can do on your Steam Deck when you take it out of the box. Speaking of leaving your screen on to download games overnight, one of the weirder things about the Steam Deck is that when you're in game mode, you can't turn off the screen and allow it to download games with the screen off. I don't really understand why, I'm assuming it's a Linux setting, but I found out in the comments the last time I mentioned this, that there is a way to make the screen turn off and that's by downloading games in desktop mode. So this tip is really for if you wanna load up a few games before you go to bed or something like that, I wouldn't do it all the time. But yeah, if you're gonna leave your Steam Deck in the same spot with the screen, on specifically if you have a Steam Deck OLED, you don't want to have any burn in or anything like that. This tip is probably very useful to you. Over in desktop mode, open up system settings and search for sleep in the top search bar. Then go to the energy saving submenu and under energy saving, just like pick a small number for when the screen's going to turn off. You can set it as low as one minute. I think you can go even lower than that. But once you do that, once you leave your Steam Deck just sitting there not really doing anything, the screen will dim and then turn off completely, which is the intended effect here. Once again, I wouldn't do this all the time because it is kind of annoying to have your screen turn off that fast, but having this feature is important to a lot of people and it is one of the weirder quirks of the Steam Deck that you can't download games in sleep mode, but now I guess you can't. The third tip is pretty basic, but it's going to come in handy for long time or new Steam Deck owners. Check out the refresh rate slider because they've improved it quite a lot. So back when this feature was initially introduced, there was actually two sliders. One of them would allow you to change the hertz of the screen, like the actual refresh rate, and then the other one would allow you to limit the FPS in game. So if you wanted to play at 40 FPS, you would drop the refresh rate of the screen to 40 Hertz and then drop the FPS to that as well. Now it's all handled by SteamOS itself with one simple slider and it comes in much more handy, I would argue on the Steam Deck OLED because the OLED has a 90 Hertz panel. So if you wanna play a game at 30 FPS, you just drag that slider down to 30. It will keep the refresh rate of the screen at 90 because 30 divides evenly into 90. So you'll actually get a lot smoother gameplay and a faster refresh time out of the screen, even though you're only playing at 30 FPS. But then if you change it to 40, I'm pretty sure it drops it to 80 Hertz. If it doesn't, it'll drop it to 40 and then your screen's FPS will match up with your screen's refresh rate and everything will look exactly how it's supposed to. One tip I knew I had to put on here when I was just trying to play Arkham Asylum on my Steam Deck is to get Proton GE. If you don't know what Proton GE is, basically it's like a custom version of Proton, which is the software Valve uses to basically emulate Windows games on the Steam Deck. It's made by a guy named Glorious Eggroll and he can include different and better Windows features than Valve can because he's not licensing them from Microsoft like Valve has to. There's a bunch of different reasons why Valve can't use a lot of these but the long story short is Proton GE can. Now to get this it's really simple all you're going to do is go over to desktop mode open the discover store and install Proton Tricks QT. Once that's installed you open the app and then you can click add version and then just add the latest version of Proton GE. Now sometimes you 
you might have to use a different version of Proton GE for a specific game. But for me personally, the latest version of this worked perfectly with Arkham Asylum. So if you've been trying to play that game because you're bummed out about how bad Suicide Squad is, now you know how to fix it on your Steam Deck. It's very simple. Oh, and just because I wasn't totally clear, once you add the version of Proton GE you want, you go back to game mode, go to compatibility for a game, choose a custom version of Proton, and then the GE version will be there alongside all the other official ones. But speaking of some games playing better with different versions of Proton GE, you're gonna wanna bookmark a website called Proton DB. There's a ton of different websites out there that'll allow you to see people's Steam Deck settings. I mean, a lot of people look on Reddit, there's Steam Deck HQ. I think there's one called Deck Share or Share Deck or something like that. But, but the best one by far, in my opinion at least, is Proton DB because it's no frills and every single Steam game is on there. And there's always at least a couple listings from a few people that'll tell you uh, what you need to know about playing a game at certain settings or using a specific version of Proton GE or even entering a launch command to block the 2K launcher in the quarry so that it doesn't run like dog shit. And one of the recent updates to the site was actually pretty legit. It split things up between PC and Steam Deck so you can just get a Steam Deck column that has entries or listings from people who are specifically playing on Steam Deck and that's where I figured out how to actually get Arkham Asylum up and running on my Steam Deck. So it's a great website. I highly recommend it. You should bookmark it on your phone or your Steam Deck's browser. The next tip is to start using dual trackpad typing. I mean, the Steam Deck already has a massive edge over Windows because you can actually use the D-pad and the face buttons to actually type on the keyboard, which is great, but it's still not the fastest solution out there. So you're gonna have to learn how to use dual trackpad typing. Basically, when you hit Steam button X to pull up the keyboard, all you have to do is put your thumbs on the trackpad and think about each thumb covering one half of the keyboard. Now, when this was uh, launched on the regular Steam Deck, like way back in the day, I famously was wasn't really too interested in it because I felt like it was a little tough, but I committed about five or 10 minutes to really learning how to do it. And now I can never go back. This is one of the best and most underrated Steam Deck features by far, if you ask me. It's like one of the coolest things ever once you learn to do it. And then when I was on my main PC playing on my TV and I pulled up big screen mode, which is just the Steam OS operating system running on your TV, uh, I tried to use dual trackpad typing on my DualSense. And I was like, wait, I can't do it. It really sucked. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to take advantage of per game performance profiles. This was added, I think last year at some point, but basically if you're playing a game and you wanna drop it to like 30 Hertz or 30 FPS, and you wanna turn on tearing and you don't wanna use VSync and you have all of these specific settings under the quick access menu, and you don't want those to save when you quit back to the desktop of the Steam Deck, all you have to do is toggle the little switch that says per game performance profile. And then once you do that, every time you open the game, it'll reconfigure itself to uh, just have all the settings you had before and then when you quit the game everything will go back to normal so you'll have 90 hertz allow tearing will be turned off and everything will look as it's supposed to on your desktop or if you want to call it the main screen of steam os i don't really care i'm just going to call it the desktop because the things i handheld pc I figured out this tip back when the trailer for the Fallout TV show came out and I wanted to play Fallout 4 with all my mods. You actually can use all of your mods very easily on the Steam Deck. It's not through the Nexus Mod Manager, it's actually through an app that's very similar called Mod Organizer 2. The setup process isn't very hard, it just takes around five minutes, so I'm not gonna go through the entire thing here. There's a great video by a channel called Oh No It's Alex where he goes through it step by step and shows you everything like how to install it, how to download mods, Mods, how to install the mods, how to change the load order, how to start the game correctly. Like every tip you need to know is in that video, but I have not had an issue with a single mod in any Fallout game. I played through Fallout New Vegas around Christmas this year. I put a few mods on it. I have a ton in Fallout 4 and I even installed a bunch in Skyrim. And no matter what mod I threw at the Steam Deck, I get great performance out of all three of those games. The next tip I have is to turn your deck OLED into a PlayStation portal. I'm honestly shocked at how much success Sony's seen with the PS Portal. I mean, its price point is perfect at $200, but even though it is a cool device, like splitting the DualSense in half and putting a big 1080p panel in the middle is cool on its own. The fact that you have to remote play games from your PS5 and you can't really take it outside of your house or anything like that, it really made it a non-starter for me, but I do like that functionality. So I decided to look into if you could just remote play games on your Steam Deck from your PlayStation 5. And of course there's a solution because there's always a solution. All you have to do is go to the Discover 
Discover Store in desktop mode, grab Chiaki for deck, install that and open it. And then it's gonna give you a web browser link. You paste that into the web browser and then it'll give you a step-by-step -step guide on getting your access code for your PlayStation Network account. Once you have that, you punch that into the Chiaki app and then over on your PlayStation, you go to settings, remote play, toggle on remote play and then get the pin, punch that into Chiaki. And once you do all that, you're good to go. There are plenty of video tutorials out there. I'm not gonna go through the entire thing here because I wanna rapid fire through all of these tips. But yeah, if you have any issues, all you have to do is just search it up on YouTube or Google it because honestly, it's very simple. Next up, speaking of playing games on your Steam Deck, you can turn it into the ultimate emulation device with EmuDeck. This is the best way bar none to install emulators on your Steam Deck. And if you wanna to subscribe to their Patreon, you can do the same thing on your Windows PC, which is so cool because it allows you to do cross saves between your Windows PC and your Steam Deck. So anyway, to get EmuDeck, you go to emudeck.com, you download the file, you double click it on your desktop, and then it'll install everything all on its own. And it even lets you pick whether you want the ROMs to be installed to the SD card or to the actual SSD or hard drive of your Steam Deck. So there's no real uh, problems when you're installing it. The only tricky thing is you've got to go and find your own BIOS. Those are super simple to find if you just Google them. And of course you have to provide your own ROMs. But once you do that, EmuDeck is awesome because it configures the screen profiles, it configures all the controls, it configures all of that stuff that takes way too long and kind of ruins the experience of just wanting to play a game on your Steam Deck. And the coolest thing about it is it comes with an app called Steam ROM Manager, which will take all of your emulated games and add them to Steam with art so that you can launch them from the game mode. It's absolutely phenomenal. And honestly, it's a Patreon that's worth subscribing to, to get the Windows version, especially if you have a gaming PC. Also, you probably won't need it, but if you want a full step-by-step -step guide on setting up EmuDeck, head over to my friend Russ's channel. It's called Retro Game Core. I'm sure you've seen it on YouTube at some point. He's got a great emulation guide for Steam Deck that he updates very regularly. This next one's kind of basic, but you probably don't know about it. Your Steam Deck has a lot of shortcut button combinations that it really doesn't tell you about. All you have to do to see them is hold the Steam button to pull up the entire menu of all the commands you can do. I'll pick out a few of my favorites and list them off now. If you hold the Steam button and use the left analog stick up or down, you can actually adjust the Steam Deck's brightness without opening the quick access menu. If a game isn't running right and you want to force quit it, like Alt F4 it on PC, all you have to do is hold the Steam button and then hold B. And then if you need a cursor in a game and you don't want to change the whole controller profile of that actual game, just hold the Steam button and then put your thumb on the right trackpad and you'll get a little mouse on the screen that you can click with with R2. This next tip is dual layered and a lot of people don't know about either layer here. So Steam actually has a guide section for every game on the storefront. So people can upload their own game facts or guides or whatever you want to call it. And they're actually very detailed. Like for every game I've ever needed one in, there's been a highly voted one ready to go that I could take advantage of. Most recently, I needed one for a couple of puzzles in Resident Evil 2. So all you do is you hit the Steam button and under the game's little side menu, you just go over to guides and there will always be the top voted guide right there ready to go. I also used it more recently in Wolfenstein The New Order just to get all the collectibles, but there was also a handy tip in there on what levels to get which perks in, like where you could cheese it by reloading your checkpoint over and over again. And I really appreciated that. So if you ever need guides, check Steam before you pull out your phone and put your Steam Deck down. I've got two tips left. The second to last one is to set your default storage. This one comes in really handy for people who either have a 256 gigabyte Steam Deck or if you're still rocking a 64 gigabyte Steam Deck, you probably have a micro SD card that goes all the way up to one terabyte. And all you have to do is go into settings and then storage and then highlight the SD card if that's what you want to use. And then if you hit X, it'll make that the default download location for all of your games. So you don't have to worry about filling up your main SSD on your Steam Deck. The last tip I have for you guys is to try out gyro aiming. Now, if you've ever played any of the Splatoon games on the Nintendo Switch, you know what this is. Basically, if you hold L to aim in that game, you can actually move the Switch itself to fine tune your aim. And it actually makes you a lot more accurate. Steam has this function built in for the Steam Deck. And I just used it in Wolfenstein The New Order. And I was dying a ton before I started using this, but being able to fine tune just the last little 2% of your aim makes you so much more accurate. And it's the next best thing to a keyboard and mouse. All you have to do is go to the controller options when you're running a game and you do that by pulling up the Steam button menu and then heading to the right to the actual game profile. And you'll see on the top of the screen, a controller profile section. Then you just do the one that's joysticks with gyro and you'll be good to go. So yeah, that was 15 of my most useful Steam Deck tips. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Also, let me know if there are any on here you didn't know about because I'm feeling pretty confident that there was at least one you didn't know about. So let me know, gas me up in the comments, please. I really appreciate it.
appreciate it. As always, guys, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.